In this video, I'm going to show how to create SVG graphs using Microsoft Office Suite along with Inkscape and Adobe Acrobat. So just starting off, I have three um, Microsoft programs open. I have Excel. Um, I also have PowerPoint, so I can copy and paste um, my graphs at different stages of editing so you can see the difference between them all. Um, I have Word, which is the way I convert a graph from Excel to a PDF. And of course, I have Inkscape open to do um, any sort of editing and customization. So I have just a little bit of data right here um, that once again, I pulled from UNICEF and I just selected it all and went up to insert and then um, insert a line graph. Um, so this is it right here. It's pretty basic. There is one thing I wanted to point out about Microsoft um, Excel and their graphs is that you have pretty limited capability when it comes to um, editing the colors. They have their own sort of color schemes um, that they provide you as, long, as well as um, some monochromatic colors. Um, but I have not been able to find a way to um, create my own colors using RGB or hex. Um, so that definitely is a limitation. Um, I'm gonna pick, I'll just pick this one for now. And so I'm gonna copy and paste this graph into my first slide of um, PowerPoint, just so you have something to compare. Keep in mind, this right now is not an SVG file. This is just a JPEG. So I'm going to copy it once again and then convert it to a PDF by pasting it in Word and then going to File, Export, Create PDF. Oh. My bad. So here's my PDF. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and pull up Inkscape and open the file here. Once again, I'm going to uh, select clip to media box and I'm gonna leave it as an internal import. I'm gonna hit okay. There we go. And I'm going to um, copy and paste this into my second slide of PowerPoint. Okay. So the first thing I need to do before I can start editing this graph is I need to save it as an SVG file. And I just do that by going up to file, save as. <clears throat> Inkscape SVG is um, one of the options. So I'm just gonna select that and hit save. And now I can go in and start doing my edits. So once again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the white background. So I'm just selecting um, any sort of blank white portion of the graph. And I'm just going to select cut. And I'm also going to select this little tiny border. And I'm going to cut that as well. So this helps the graph look more lathe. Um, lay better and sort of incorporate it better into your poster, um, which again, oftentimes your poster will have watermarks or they'll have some sort of um, very subtle design in the background. So deleting these sort of white edges will make your graph look a lot more, um, it'll make your poster look a lot more cleaner. It'll look a little bit better than just seeing, oh, you just copied and pasted that and just slapped it onto your board. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of my text um, with um, 
writing my own word text. Um, I've showed this in the uh, in other videos, but I'm going to show it again just so you can see what happens when you try to edit the text. Um, let's see. If you try to edit the text, and let's say I wanted to change the size of it right now, and let's say I wanted to make it bigger, you can see all of the letters are squished together, and that will conversely happen when you try to make the font smaller. All the letters will be spaced out. So because of this, I am going to go in and replace all of my text so that I can control the size, the font, and the spacing, and it'll look a lot more um, when you do end up translating it over to PowerPoint. It'll look nice and spaced out. It won't necessarily look this way um, if you did not replace your text, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording now and replace all of my text. Okay, so I went ahead and I replaced all of my text and then I turned the recording back on so I could show you once again some really fast, easy ways to format and align all of your um, text. So the first one I'm going to focus on are all of these numbers on the vertical axis. Um, instead of trying to drag each one and keep it, you know, perfectly aligned, I'm just going to put the first one where I want it to be. I'll keep it right there. And then actually, yeah, that looks fine. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the rest of my um, numbers. It, it dropped it. Okay, I'm going to do this again. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to this right toolbar and under align and distribute. I'm going to leave it relative to the first selected. The first selected was my zero. And I'm going to have everything center on the vertical axis, meaning the vertical axis of the zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and you'll see everything will fall in line. Um, I guess I left out the, the 15, which is no big deal because I can just um, select one value, hold the shift key down, select the 15 and do the same thing over again and it falls right in place. So the second thing I want to do is I want to align them all um, um, equidistant from each other. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag my five where I want it. And once again, just to double check, that's in a good spot. Make sure this is still on the vertical axis. OK, great. And now I'm going to select my zero and hold the shift key down and select the rest of my values. And then I'm going to select distribute centers equidistantly vertically. And you can see they are spaced out. It's, it's okay. Um, I'm going to, I think maybe they're all just a little bit higher than I wanted them to be. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and edit, bring my zero down and bring my five down just a tiny bit. That looks better. Um, once again, make sure, because I moved both of these values, now I'm going to select the 10 as my first selected to make sure these are all centered on the vertical axis. Okay, they're fine. And now, I'm gonna select um, this once again. 
Oh, that didn't work. Let's see. Yeah, they're just a little too high, which is fine. I can just go ahead and try to change it a little more to what I want. Okay, that's better. And um, now I'm gonna switch it over to align to the vertical axis. That might have been um, it might have been better to do the distributing um, the space in between first before you align them all on the same axis. So um, so now that's done. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to focus on the years here. So for these years, there is no sort of tick that I can align each year to. So it's going to be a little challenging to, um, <clears throat> to see that they are all, you know, spread, um, they're all placed correctly and spread a good, you know, distance apart from each other. Um, once again, I'm going to um, change the font size. So this one is a nine. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Oh, you know what? Hold the shift key down and select all of these. Go back to text. So I can change the font size. Okay. And I'm basically going to do the same thing I did before. Um, I'm just going to try to align it as close as possible. I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to um, get the second one as close as possible as well. I'm going to zoom in really closely so I can delete the second one. And then I'm going to select all of them and then have them spread equidistantly from each other. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording so I can format this a little bit better. All right, so I figured out a bit of a, a trick for this um, to make sure all of the years are spread equidistantly apart, but they're also in line with the actual graph. Um, there are rulers on both the vertical and horizontal axis. So I just took a look at where the lines for the graph both start and they're about one tick before this 175. So I just went ahead and shifted my first value so that it, um, so that it hit that mark right there. Um, and for the last value, I'm going to make sure it hits that mark also. So I can see it's just one little tick before 625. So I'm going to drag and drop it right there.
and I'm going to try and get these other values as close as possible using the rulers um, at the top here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and delete what I have. Now I'm selecting all my values. And I selected distribute centers equidistantly horizontally. So that didn't make much of a difference. Let me zoom out to show you. And then I'm going to align them all with the um, which icon is it? Align at the top edges so that they'll all be in line with the 1970. So now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Greece and Malta labels. And change the font once again by selecting word text. Small. Okay. And then I'm going to bring these up to my color. All right. And the last um, bit for aligning is I'm going to change the title so that it is aligned with this top line right here. So first, I think I'm going to make the subtitle a little bit smaller. And I'm going to hold once again the shift key down and select my title and subtitle and then select to have it centered on the vertical axis. I'm going to drag this down just a tiny bit and then redo it. There we go. And then for the final part, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors of the lines for my line graph. Um, in the previous video, I showed um, the colors for Toro University, Nevada, that teal and gold, and what their RGB values are. Um, for this one, I'm going to show you a different, um, a different source for colors. Um, There's a site um, called I Want Hue, and it will populate um, complementary colors along with their RGB and their hex values. So I can select how many colors I want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select two, and I'm going to select a hard force vector. What this does is it gives more it makes the colors brighter and more sort of 
complementary. Um, I'll show you the difference between soft and hard, but um, so the soft colors, they're all pretty much this sort of olive green and purple, no matter how many times you try to um, generate a new color combination. So because of that, it's a lot more exciting to select the hard force vector and find a nice color. I'll choose this one. Um, so, I'm going to go down to the fill and stroke on the toolbar and um, basically stroke is for the outlines of objects and fill is just um, you know filling a solid color inside objects because these are just lines they shouldn't really have any stroke color or it should be the same as their fill um, so we're just gonna go with fill and we're gonna choose the flat color what is that? Let's go ahead and undo that. Um, okay, so the color wasn't select, or the line wasn't actually selected. Yeah, that's not working. Hmm. I might have to go with fill or um, with stroke. Okay, okay, so that's fine. So for the line graphs, you are gonna have to go with stroke. And um, in the previous video for bar, it was, uh, you just had to go with fill color. So I'm gonna go back and get my RGB values. 84, 62. And I'm going to do the same with my other color. Okay, and that is it for my edits. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to hit save. And then I'm going to close out of this and go over to my PowerPoint. And I'm going to go ahead and select to insert this image. So as you can see, it pasted an entire image, um, like as if it was an entire Word document with just the image on top of it, um, which is fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop out this bottom part. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand it to make it bigger. I'm going to also crop out some of this stuff at the top it's a little bit much. All right, sorry about that. Um, so basically, once you've cropped your image, you can see once again that it is, it does have a transparent background and you're able to expand it um, as much as you can. And when this prints out, it will not look fuzzy or pixelated at all. Um, 
So I'm going to show you just some side-by-side -side comparisons of the other graphs at you know the different stages. Um, so this was our graph that was just copied and pasted. Um, it looks, you know, I blew it up a little bit. Let me try and make it smaller. Um, it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but when I go, oops, when I try to move it, um, it does have a transparent background. However, the, um, the color of the font is a little light, so it could easily get lost if you did have um, a watermark or designs on your poster. Um, this is the PDF without editing in Inkscape. So if I try to move this one around, again, it does have a transparent background. Um, it's basically the same. It just looks a lot smaller, less stretched out. I didn't um, stretch this graph out at all. So I'm not really sure. Well, I guess it's fine. Um, this is the SVG graph without replacing text objects. So, you know, once again, I showed you what it would look like if you did try to edit that font and um, um, without editing, or if you did try to edit that font without replacing the text. And then finally, we have our edited graph. Um, it looks, the text is bigger, it's darker, it's bolder. It's easier to read. Um, you can place it anywhere and you can um, expand it as much as you can so that when your poster prints out, it will not look fuzzy or pixelated. Um, so that is the end of this tutorial. Um, thanks so much for watching.